and welcome back to the Crypto Hulk Show. We got a great one lined up. All right. Yeah. We're going after the judge. We're going after an ex SEC commissioner. Hell, we're going after all of them. The whole, well, the whole world. That's what we're up to today. My name's Crypto Hulk. Nothing in the show should be taken seriously. Yeah. I'm not a financial advisor, not a crypto advisor, none of the above. Um, don't buy anything I tell you to. Um, the show's just for information. That's it. I'm going to show you connections and stuff. Uh, I'm going to tell you to buy shit. Don't do it. <clears throat> okay? That's how we do the thing on this show. Who's the first one here? Who the hell was the first one? Hunter. Then Stephen Morris. Hanglish. Pablo Escobar. Not John McAfee and MK underscore P. If I appear a little bit out of breath, it's because I'm a little bit out of breath. I got out of a dry sauna, and that shit usually kicks my ass for about an hour. Have you seen me drinking water? I'm drinking water. I dehydrate too easy. <clears throat> 1970 legend is here. Dennis H. says, A party filed an amicus brief in one of the current cases saying, No crypto case can be heard until Congress passes a law. Holy shit! I've only been saying that for four fucking years, right? We don't have crypto regulations. The judge, Sarah Netburn, Judge Torres, none, Zip Zero, Gary Gensler, nobody, not even Santa Claus, can write crypto laws. It's Congress that has to do it. The judges cannot hear. All these court cases these judges have heard, it's all fucking fake. Crypto Hulk's telling you. Holy shiznit. Don't get me fucking started. Crypto Hulk's a little bit late for that. <clears throat> a party filed an amicus brief in one of the current cases saying no crypto case can be heard until Congress passes a law. It's about fucking time somebody else said this. I'm not the only one for four fucking years talking about the United States Code. We have nothing in the United States Code as far as crypto regulation, organization, definition, None of that shiznit. Crypto Hulk says it's a violation of 18 U.S. Code, <clears throat> Section 242. If you work for any type of government and you stop somebody in the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in the United States, when the government like Gary Gensler, when a judge like today, what's this bitch's name? Are we calling her a bitch, Crypto Hulk? Yes, we are. Now, I'm an equal opportunity offender. Gary Gensler is a bitch, and he's a man. I'll use that term interchangeably. It doesn't matter. Guys can be bitches and sometimes bigger bitches than girls. Judge Falia is a bitch. She has no fucking idea what she's saying. And what's this? Former SEC chief John Reed Stark, he's a bitch too. He doesn't fucking get it. None of these people fucking get it, like Crypto Hall. You know what I'm saying? Alrighty then. Dennis, thanks for setting me off. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Andre, Andre is welcome to the 2024 Crypto Explosion membership level. If you got a membership, hey, come on now, sign up with Crypto Hulk, and because I'll be starting up uh, in a few days doing all the membership shows again. I usually uh, get take a little bit of a break for a little bit, which I did. So we're coming up to doing a lot of the members only again. You need to don't let your membership expire because it's going to happen. And then for a month or two, you're not going to realize, oh, I'm not watching Crypto Hulk. And then you come back and it just just do it now. Get the membership, hook it up <clears throat> on top of your free one. They won't charge you. And if you don't like the show, you can still get your money back. YouTube and me are not going to try to take your fucking precious five or ten dollars. Okay, you'll get it back. Everything will be okay. Okay. 
Uh, Kitsch J. Thank you, Kitsch J, for going above and beyond there. <clears throat> hey, some people financially can't do it. That's fine. I'm not talking to you. Please do not explain your financial situation to everybody. I've got 10 kids. Cancer took my left leg. My right eye is gone due to melanoma. Like, we, have, I don't, we don't need to hear your fucking story, all right? That's between you and the universe and karma and whatever. Uh, Bastos Talapia. Thank you very much for that donation there, buddy. We got 1970 Legend. Says hit the like. Everybody hit the like button. Hit the damn like button. Quit being cheap. <clears throat> Let's go over the court case since I kind of already started with this. Let's see what these dumb shits are up to. Look, I I'm telling you guys, this shit is so fucking planned out, okay? I'm showing you all this stuff. I'm not even a lawyer, and this shit's fucking easy to see. They're playing everybody. I think even some of the lawyers are so fucking stupid they don't know. Okay. <clears throat> or, yeah, Stephen Morris, the never ending fake trial court case. This shit never fucking ends. It's a stall tactic. I'm showing you. There's no precedent. You can't. Okay, let's, let's go to the article before I fucking get my high blood pressure up. I go in the dry side on purpose because overall it keeps my blood pressure at like 128 over 80. It was, damn, like 155. And shit like that over 95 wasn't good and then ever since i started using dry sun i can keep it down in the 120s middle 120s and then the bottom number is usually 78 to 82 or somewhere in there like for me that's good i don't need a lecture oh crypto hulk it technically needs to be at uh how about check the fucking chart that says go fuck yourself how about that um here's the Article right here with this stupid ass judge. I'm using that term loosely. Judge Torres ruling on XRP secondary market sales were challenged by the SEC. So here's what happened. The SEC goes to a different court because they got treated like a bitch by Judge Torres. <clears throat> so they go to a different court and try to sue Coinbase. And then the judge, who's a total fucking retard, decides that, oh, yeah, the sales of the XRP were securities. No, they're not. See, look, star decisis. I've gone over this shit again. I'm not a lawyer. Star decisis is let the previous case stand. It's how you do things in law. Like, judges have case law. So when one judge has a case, and it's very similar to another one, that's star decisis. All these lawyers, all these fucking judges know this shit, okay? Okay, so when a judge, Torres, rules, now she's not allowed to do this, but look, that's besides the point. Let's just ignore I even said that. Because um, we're, we're just going along with the fucking shenanigans, okay? Uh, the court case is totally fake. <clears throat> judge, the judge has to rule in the same fashion otherwise you got one judge saying this and one judge says that and that one over there says that and this one here says the other see where we end up with a clusterfuck so this judge falia needs to get her shit kicked out of her job let's go over this former sec official john reed stark and fellow idiot uh, highlights Judge Falia completely disagreeing with Judge Torres. So what happened is you got an, an ex-SEC guy who gets in on this case with SEC and Coinbase and this fake judge called Fila or whatever her fucking name is. And the judge, Fila goes against the Ripple judges that ruled in favor of Ripple, and then she rules in favor of the SEC, saying, yeah, Coinbase was selling securities. Ha 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 ha. I'm like, you stupid fucking bitch. There's no contract, you whore. Are you serious? People, oh my God. There's no, if there's no fucking contract. Okay, look, here's how the legal system works. Not on planet Uranus, okay? The legal system works. <clears throat> if I'm selling you something and there's no written contract, there's no fucking written contract. Got it? It's that fucking easy. If you'd make a deal with uh, the cops 
and you're being interrogated. And uh, if you don't have it in writing, that deal doesn't work. If your best friend said, hey, I'll give you my house when I die, that's not a contract. Coinbase and the people who bought shit off Coinbase, there's no contract. Is this shit that fucking complicated? <clears throat> this judge <clears throat> is a total fucktard, okay? And so is the former SEC official, John Reed Stark. Let's get into this dumb shit right now. Judge Catherine Fila decisions in the Coinbase versus SEC lawsuit were significant developments for both parties and on the crypto regulatory front. However, the ruling was a partial but big win for the SEC. Former SEC Chief John Reed Stark highlights Judge Falia completely disagreeing with Judge Torres' decision. So John Stark comes in, starts running his fucking mouth about something he has no fucking clue about. Um, Ex-SEC contradicts Judge Torres' ruling. So the Judge Torres made a ruling. It was quite simple. And this judge just undid what the previous judge did. You see where this drama shit happens? It's the case that never ends. And I'm going to tell you, nobody else is telling. I'm not going to read this article anymore. It's so fucking stupid. Let me tell you about this. Joy Fat Toes got a membership, the uh, advanced membership. Glad to catch your show. Super busy lately, still here. Welcome back, Joey. Okay, look, don't, ma don't make me put on my Darth Vader mask while I run the show, okay? Pretty cool. I'm still like 10 years old mentally. Um, okay. This case, <laughs> this case is so fucking fake. I like, oh my God. Wh where do I start? Okay. Let me show you the United States Code right here. Brand new people. We're going to go over the United States Code, and we're going back to this court case, because the judge, oh wow, this is just unfucking believable Luke, I'm your father. It's a pretty fucking cool mask, man. I got it at uh, Target. I think it was like 40 to 50 bucks. Was it Target or Walmart? I don't fucking remember. I think it was Target. I don't fucking... T Maybe it was Walmart. Fuck it. I don't remember. It don't matter. <clears throat> Stephen Morris, Order 66, initiated. All right. There's your article. 18 United States Code. There's a lot of shit code. Let's first start with this. This is the answer of all answers. <clears throat> We're looking at a Cornell Law School. They're showing you a portion of what we call the U.S. Code. It's a very big, you can go onto the webpage and find it and scroll down. And This is just much faster, okay? You have the 18 United States Code, Section 242. What's the title of this? Deprivation of of rights under color of law, depriving people of their rights. You have the right to life, well, except in cases where people are up there killing babies. Somehow they justify that one, but okay. How about this? Quit fucking somebody, then you don't have to kill human beings. Okay, how about that? How about being responsible? Anyway, let me continue with this fucking shit. <clears throat> you have the, the right to life, liberty, which is freedom. Well, we're almost done with that army. We're, we're killing people. I mean, these babies will be born, and they'll just end up aborting them after they come out of the mother. Like, what the fuck is going on? So we don't respect life. 
liberty, well, we're losing all of our freedoms. And then the pursuit of happiness, well, so many people are depressed all the time. We got That's why everybody's trying to snort fentanyl or whatever they're doing and shit and killing each other. So life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, I guess, doesn't exist in the United States anymore. But that was the original intention, okay? So crypto is just that. It's, it's your life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. There is nothing in the United States code, regulatory-wise, definitions, showing the framework of crypto. There's nothing there. Now. Let's go back to what, sixth, seventh, or eighth grade? The powers of the, the organization, the government. You got the judicial, which are the judges. The legislative branch, branch makes the law. The, ju the judges interpret the law. The president is the one that signs it into um, the executive. He signs it into order, okay? So here's how it works. I know this shit's really fucking complicated, judges out there. Uh, John Stark from the SEC. I know this shit's really fucking complicated, so I'm taking it back to seventh grade, all right? <clears throat> so, you know, there used to be a thing called Schoolhouse Rock, and it's like, I'm just a bill on Capitol Hill. You know that one? Um We could learn a lot from watching that Schoolhouse Rock shit from the 1974 or whatever, you know? And um, so let's get back. Congress makes a law. The judges interpret that law, okay? And then the president signs it, ratifies, ratification. There's a ratification. So now that we understand the basics, Gary Gensler can't do shit because Cryptocurrency does not exist in the eyes of the law. Judges like this dumb bitch and these other ones, okay, they cannot rule on a case. They can't have a finding or whatever the fuck you want to call it at different court levels. Because guess what? It doesn't exist. Oh. So when Judge Torres in the Ripple case rendered a opinion or decision or whatever she want to fucking call it a verdict that doesn't even fucking matter why because let's go back to the basics we have no crypto laws and regulation and framework in the united states code when the sec guy john stark let's go back refer to the article <clears throat> john reed stark former sec he can't say shit about crypto because it does not exist in the United States code. Do we get this? When this stupid fucking judge, because she did not recuse herself or dismiss this case, this Judge Falia, or whatever her fucking name is, her decision doesn't mean shit <clears throat> because we have no crypto laws and regulations in the United States code. Do you fucking get this? It's not that complicated. Any crypto case that comes before a judge needs to go bye-bye, just like that. These judges have no authority to render decisions in crypto cases because there's no law. Judges are paid to evaluate the law and determine a decision from that. If you don't have a law... Judges can't render a verdict, decision, or whatever. Am I making sense? Can somebody give me an amen? Oh, God. This fucking... These, this whole... Fuck, these people, these lawyers act like they're just... Oh, shit. What do we do? Oh, God. Uh, uh, <clears throat> oh, we're getting a letter from the SEC. Oh, shit. Brian Armstrong, what do we do? I'm a lawyer for Coinbase. Oh, shit. We got a letter from Gary. Oh, God. I'm scared. What do we do, Brian? Brian's like, oh, I don't know. Pay him the money. Pay him the money. And I, I walk in the door. I'm like, everybody sit down and shut the fuck up. Okay? Brian, don't, don't sit the fuck down. I need to talk here. I need to talk some sense into you dumb shits. <clears throat> that's how, that's what they need. Will Davis, thank you, Hulk. Oh, Hippie17 says, sit in the back row 
saving links for another show reading material. Stuart Lavelle gave 10 people memberships. Oh, Stuart's back at it again, I see. Uh, 007 Alex got a membership. Chaos Dubs, Byron Lewis, Isaac, Todd Dever, Henry J. Wait a second, I think my screen slipped. Byron Lewis, Isaac, Todd DeVore, then Henry, Henry J., Jeff Nickel, Patrick Lawrence, and Richard all got memberships by Stuart LaBelle. Oh, then you throw in Chameleon South Africa. And I see Kurt Scott there. We've got some beer and a cocktail. Lovely. Some more beer. Uh... Is that a coffee and two tacos? <clears throat> awesome. Send them over. <laughs> <clears throat> Sounds like the breakfast of champions. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay. Just like when certain people considered mandates as law with these titles and their attorneys are not smart enough to even look at the code. <clears throat> Thanks for the membership, says Alex. Okay, so for instance, here's what we do. Since these other people uh, on YouTube running channels never have worked law enforcement before, I'm going to help you out, okay? I kind of started in law enforcement in 1993. That's not a big deal, huh? It's only like, what, 30 fucking years ago? All right, not a big deal. I started off in law enforcement in uh, 1993. Um, it was called the California Vehicle Code Book, which I had to learn a lot. Okay, then there was the Penal Code, Business and Profession Code, Health and Safety Code. These kind of things—they're called codes. They're law. Okay. Now, if I were to uh, see somebody uh, maybe injecting drugs or something, <clears throat> then you know, or maybe. Uh, they have they toss a needle on the ground. That's like a health and safety code violation. Or a restaurant can violate a business and profession code violation. Maybe they're selling alcohol to minors or some shit. There's different things: speeding, twenty-two, three, forty-nine, whatever it is. That you, what, there's a code for something, and if you violate that code, then it's illegal. Okay, so then you put the handcuffs on. You know how? Okay, so you know how Gary says, "Yeah, we're like the cops on the beat." No, no, you're not. Maybe you beat off. Gary beats off, but he's not a cop on the beat, okay? So I used to do the job <clears throat> in, like, three different states, okay? Now, in Arizona, we have the Arizona Revised Statutes. It's a bit different there. The laws are different. You can get, like, disorderly conduct in your house in Arizona. I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't agree with that one. I worked law enforcement in Arizona. I'm like, that's totally – I'm not going to write somebody up for disorderly conduct in your own house. Like, are you fucking kidding me? In California, like, that would almost be a violation of somebody's rights. If you if you were in somebody's house in California, I'm like, oh, I'm arresting you for disorderly conduct. I mean, I could lose my fucking job, you know. Um, but in Arizona, it's like, yeah, if you cuss or yell too loud or some shit, like you can get in trouble and like go to jail. Like, are you fucking serious? Like that's so I didn't agree with Arizona with that. But anyhow, Arizona here says fraud. <clears throat> so why am I saying this? It's because everything has to be codified, like building code. Like you want to build a building, right? You got to have an inspector come out, code inspector, code enforcement officer, these kinds of fucking things, right? Where is all this with crypto? Answer, nowhere. Got it? These lawyers, either we've got a country full of fucked up lawyers that don't know shit, but they sure act like it, and they sure charge a lot of fucking money for, uh, not knowing the, the damn thing, all right? So, what we got going on <clears throat> is in the United States, it's called the United States Code. In Arizona, I mean, in Arizona, it's called the Re Arizona Revised Statutes. In California, you got the Penal Code. This is kind of what we're talking about. We're not talking about the Vehicle Code. So, this, so the United States' version is the United States Code. All right. And um, that's where <clears throat> the judges would look at the law that's in the code. So if you are um, in California and 
I'm selling crypto or whatever. Then they got to look in the penal code, the California penal code, and determine what section does it talk about how crypto is regulated, what's the definition of staking, yields, all the all this shit in there. Then there's got to be penalties put in there. First offense, uh, six months probation, fine of $5,000. You got to have all that stuff in the penal code. So, but the United States doesn't have it. It's called the United States Code. So since we don't have that, how is the judge supposed to interpret the law when there's no law? And that's the question right there, that every crypto channel <clears throat> um, has no clue about. <clears throat> no one talks about it. No one discusses it. All they'll do is, oh, yeah, there was a court hearing today, da, 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 and this happened, and this judge said that, or that lawyer said whatever, you know. <clears throat> so that's pretty much what's up. Um, and when I, when I read these court case things, I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? This thing is so fucking fake. Like, what <clears throat> basis is the judge, like, what book is the judge uh, basing her opinion on? The court's opinion, like, in a finding? Like, on what? What are you basing on? Because there's no law. Like, is it your personal fucking opinion? Because that's not what we pay judges for. That's illegal. Judges have to follow what the, Cal okay, California's penal code. If it's in Arizona, the judge has to follow the Arizona revised, revised statutes. See what sections and subsections you're, I mean, giving your, uh, rendering your verdict with. I mean, that's what you got to do. But we don't have that. So, the court case that never ends. All this shit is fucking dumb shit, okay? <clears throat> That's my opinion. Hold on, I need to hydrate. So right now, you can't get in trouble <clears throat> for buying and selling crypto, and the, like nobody gets in trouble for that. You notice it's money laundering, wire fraud. I, I want you to see that. Name a case where someone got in trouble for selling crypto. Can't happen. There's no sections in the United States code for that. Um, <clears throat> Gary Ginzer can sue somebody. These judges can give cases. Maybe people can get busted for different things. But no U.S. code equals no law. Okay, I've already broken this down like three gazillion and two million times. Okay, on my channel, we understand shit now because I used to work in the court system in the, at the state level. I'm telling new people this. Uh, the, the highest court position I worked for was at a particular state, and I worked at the state level in the Supreme Court. Okay, <clears throat> I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a guy with a lot of experience. Okay, I don't know everything. I have a basic working knowledge of the United States court system all the way from the county up to the the federal, well, not quite. I worked for the Department of Justice, so anyhow, I worked at that level. I did not work in the court system in the Department of Justice. I was more like a, let's say, uh, I investigated a lot of shit sometimes. Let's say, I don't want to say what I did. Um, so let me click out of that article. There it is. We're clicking that, and it's bye bye. <clears throat> oh, here is the, uh, oh, let, let me show you. <clears throat> False alarm, we're not leaving that court case alone. Here's a copy-paste for you. <clears throat> what I just showed you there, I shared with you um, Office of Public Affairs, United States Department of Justice. That's who I used to work for. Not the Office of Public Affairs, but the Department of Justice. Um, if we look here, the title of this particular page is Ripple Labs Incorporated Resolves Criminal Investigation. Okay. If you look in the first paragraph, you see a blue hyperlink. Click on that. <clears throat> that takes you 
That takes you right here to the Ripple Settlement Agreement. Now, brand new people don't know what this is. Let me give you the very quick version after uh, I say thank you to MC Prosperity. Hulk, we have an incompetent judicial system. It's very sad. That's what MC Prosperity said. It's very sad. It is. When I worked in the Department of Justice, I didn't like how it was. They would do shit to look. <clears throat> I don't fight for criminals. I don't like, I just do my job. <clears throat> but I would see person after person in the Department of Justice get busted for conspiracy. Like 90% of the, these fucking people I had to interact with all had these conspiracy charges. You know what that is? When the FBI and the government's too much of a fucking pussy to do the work, to bust your ass, they try to find some cheap way to get around the law to bust you. That's not right. No, I don't stick up for criminals. If you do some fucked up shit, you're going to get, you're, you need to get busted for that. But when I see a Justice Department over and over and over and over not get all the evidence, <clears throat> just use something called conspiracy because it's easier. And then you can get five counts on somebody and get their jail time up to 100 years. And then say, well, how about if you agree to this one charge and we'll only have you do seven years instead of 100 that's how they do that shit. And they got it all on conspiracy. It makes me fucking sick. Just like these RICO acts that they did with all the uh, Italian mobsters and shit. That's fucking wrong. So anyhow, I'm getting off that. It's another subject. That's I had to quit the Department of Justice because it just fucking made me sick. All right? All right. <clears throat> did I mention uh, the courts were corrupt too? Thank you for sharing your research and understanding with all of us here learning. Okay. Stuart Lavelle is doing it again. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, brand new people, look, if you got a membership, please do this. <clears throat> it's free, okay? Sign up, get a membership with me at whatever level you want. <clears throat> and when your free membership ends, let's say you don't like it, or you go, you're a week or two into my membership, cancel and get your money back. Just do that. Don't let it expire. All right, let me adjust this. Don't let it expire because I'm getting a lot of expired memberships lately and it's happening like it's not good. All right, MR and if I have to do the work to find the best news for people to show you all the connections, just do your work by hooking up the membership. Okay, don't let it expire. It's that fucking easy. All right, <clears throat> don't let your ass just get so fat and lazy and shitty. Don't let it do that. Get up. Get up off your fat ass right now. <laughs> get up off your fat ass and get the membership cooked up. All right. 3, 3Y, 3 3AM, 3 Crypto Bruce, AOG Jr., uh, <clears throat> Armor of God Jr., <clears throat> XRP Demon 10K, Kansas Stacker, Spags, Daniel Jansen, Paul Jordan, Jason Stillman. All you people got memberships from Stuart Lavelle. All right. Um, uh, DJ Super Chancho. Uh, don't consider being a comedian as a full time job, just keep it as a hobby. All right. Next. So I showed you that. <clears throat> okay, so here's the settlement agreement. Let me go over that again in case somebody just came in. I got, I'm going to make this one quick. I'm not going to rant and rave on the settlement agreement. I've done it. So, but then again, I've gotten probably at least 500 new members. Okay, <clears throat> what we got going on is this. <clears throat> Brand new people. Okay. In 2015. 2013-14, Ripple kind of got in trouble with the government. They were um, buying and selling XRP. Imagine that. Imagine the fuck that. Okay. <clears throat> but they only did it for about six weeks. After six weeks when XRP, I mean, I'm sorry. After six weeks when Ripple Labs sold XRP, they stopped doing it. <clears throat> now, this is July 2013. 
this is like 11 years ago. This is a long fucking time ago. This whole Ripple trial thing with Gary Gensler is so fucking fake. All right, so new people, I'm trying to make this simple so you get it. So 2013, July 2013, Ripple stopped selling it. After that, Ripple got a subsidiary called XRP2. They were the ones after that <clears throat> that would buy and sell XRP off the market, okay? They'd sell it to banks or whoever they wanted to, okay? It was XRP Fund 2. It was not Ripple. So ever since then, and the XRP Fund 2 is still doing this shit, okay? This whole court case is so fucking fake. Let's go over the document. I'm going to show you and prove to you what I just said, okay? <clears throat> First page of the document says settlement agreement. Scroll down. That's page one. Scroll down past page two. Scroll down past page three, page four. On page five, everybody agreed. The United States Attorney, the Justice Department, the FBI was there. The whole Everybody was there. God and everybody. Okay? All right. Now, this current court case that the Ripple's in, it's only Gary Gensler. The Justice Department ain't there. The Treasury's not there. The Treasury Police, United States Attorney, FBI wasn't involved. Nobody's involved in this shit except Gary Gensler. And guess what? It's a civil trial. It's not even criminal. So it means nothing at all. It's total bullshit, okay? That's why the FBI didn't get involved. The FBI <clears throat> and all the Justice Department and stuff, <clears throat> that's what this Ripple case in 2015, let me show you. Let's scroll down. It says one, Roman numeral, okay, attachment A. So now we're at this 2015 Ripple settlement agreement is in two parts. The settlement agreement in the beginning and then the like penalty phase in the end. That's the last half. That's what we're reading now. Attachment A. <clears throat> Statement of facts and violations. <clears throat> Roman numeral one. Let's skip that. Roman numeral two. Skip that. Now we're at page one again. Scroll down. We're at page two. Scroll down again. We're at page three. Stop here. Roman numeral three. Violations. Capital letter A. Paragraph 16. Let's go over what the law is showing, okay? This, this case law, this court case. Judges are supposed to follow case law. That's why we don't have a clusterfuck in the justice system, okay? <clears throat> so, in 2015, the, everybody I just mentioned, the Justice Department, everybody knew this. Here's what they all knew. These judges now, and Gary Ginsler's like, well, what is XRP? Oh, shit. Uh, and the judges are like, well, it must be this or it must be that. Oh, God, what is it? We've already, look, we've already had a court case. The United States government and the district court in Northern California, federal court in California, has already determined what Ripple and XRP is. These court cases are fake. After this, listen, <clears throat> Ripple Labs, I'm going to paraphrase, uh, is described as, in quote, a currency exchange service. Did you hear that? A currency. XRP is the actual currency. Online, real-time currency trading and cash management. Are you hearing the word security in there? No, no fucking sir. Ripple facilitates the transfers of electronic cash and equivalents and provides what? Virtual currency exchange. You know what exchange is? Back and forth, back and forth. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> for six weeks, look at number 17, from March 6, 2013 to April 29, 2013, Ripple Labs sold convertible virtual currency known as XRP. Notice the government has already determined that Ripple sold currency. What was the name of it? XRP. It's not a security. You see this? I bring facts. Other channels, they just talk about some court hearing. Let's go to the next page, <clears throat> page five. Go to number 22. So we got capital letter B, paragraph 22. I'll read it for you in case you don't have it. <clears throat> On July 1st, remember, Ripple only sold it 
from like March 6th until April or whatever the fuck it was, okay? On July 1st, 2013, Whipple Labs started a subsidiary. You know what the name of it is? XRP Fund 2. I just told you. <clears throat> then they changed their name to XRP2. Listen to this. XRP2 was created to do what? Not Ripple. Engage in the sale and transfer. Buy, sell. Buy, sell. Sell XRP off into the market. Buy it back off of people. It's not a security. These court cases are so fucking fake. I'm showing you the proof right here. This is already a court decision. This is done already. No other channels discussing this. Do you see this? <clears throat> it's ridiculous how fucking stupid these other people are that make videos. Listen to this. Um, XRP2 was created to engage in the sale and transfer of convertible virtual currency. XRP2 to various third parties on a wholesale basis. Wait, didn't we just hear the judge say that XRP was selling securities to third parties? Well, we're just reading right here. Third parties. XR they were selling and buying XRP to various third parties on a wholesale basis. It's not. They weren't selling securities. These judges have all this shit wrong. This these judges are fake. These court hearings are fake. Right here, third-party sales. And they're not securities. <laughs> XR, and it wasn't even Ripple doing it. You see how fucking fake this whole thing is? It wasn't even Ripple doing it. It's, this, it's a business called XRP Fund 2. Wow, right? <clears throat> this is so fucking fake. XRP2 sold XRP currency, right? In exchange for fiat currency. So that means Ripple sold the XRP to a subsidiary called XRP Fund 2. It was XRP Fund 2 who would sell it to third parties on a wholesale basis. And then they would buy it back sometimes. <clears throat> so XRP2 had the XRP. They went up to Wells Fargo and said, hey, how'd you like some of this crypto? Give us a million dollars. Wells Fargo would give um, XRP2 a million dollars, and then uh, XRP2 would give Wells Fargo the XRP. And then sometimes uh, XRP Fund 2 got on the phone and said, hey, you want us to buy some of that back? And they said, yeah. You see how all this happened? Okay, let me read the last paragraph, and we're done with this. In other words, XRP2 replaced Ripple Labs as the seller of XRP. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury of Crypto Hull, <clears throat> on July 1st, 2013, XRP Fund 2 was created, and they replaced Ripple Labs as the seller and buyer of XRP. I rest my case. All these other channels are fucking stupid, all right? They report on all this court shit, and they have no fucking idea what they're talking about. It makes me sick, all right? And I try my best to show you exactly what's going on. That's why YT jams my fucking channel up, Facebook does it, uh, Twitter, TikTok, all of them, because nobody's teaching shit like this except me. Okay, let me get my composure back again. <clears throat> um, did I read? Yeah, okay, I got those from Stuart Lavelle. <clears throat> Stuart Lavelle knocks out another 10 people with memberships. <clears throat> John Becerra, Karan Kapoor, Knox Bill, Divergence Trading, Crypto Canuck. That guy's been around for a couple of years. Well, he was here and he left and came back. Robert Kovacs, Iceman, <clears throat> Dank Digital, Sam Pierce, Stephen Campbell, and then Big Royce comes in and drops a fat-ass red pill. Appreciate that. You guys, 
I want new people. I want you to see what's going on. Like, I don't know these people. We don't barbecue. We don't hang out. I probably one day would like to meet them or whatever. It'd be like, why the fuck you give so much money to the channel? And why do you give away so many damn memberships? <clears throat> they believe in the channel. I'm, I'm guessing they believe in the channel. They find the evidence is like, holy shit, right? And it's just like, I'm the only one teaching this shit. And, they, and they're trying to encourage you. They're definitely encouraging me. Um, I appreciate it. It keeps me going. When YouTube bans, shadow bans me and shit, and I can only get 33,000 people, well, they don't, I don't got them all here, but I should have like a fucking million people on my show, you know? <clears throat> a million people pulling in five bucks a month, son of a bitch. That would be a fucking racket to get into, man. But no, unfortunately, I don't have nearly <clears throat> that number. But then again, that's how it goes. If I want to teach the truth, I got to take the bull with the horns <clears throat> and deal with this commie platform. Thomas, thanks for that donation. It's all dog and pony show institutions trying to keep retail out and keep up the fake news, man. Go sappers. Big Royce gave 10 people memberships. Oh, man. New people, again, get a membership. Like, you got a free membership? Order mine on top of it. Cancel later. Get my membership. Here's the Crypto Hulk challenge. And I'm still doing good on the diet. For dinner, I had some uh, tri-tip and uh, like 15 olives, like small little olives. That was dinner. It's not My body's starting to adjust to this low-carb shit. I had a hamburger for lunch. <clears throat> the, the bun bread was really thin. Uh, that's all the carb I had today was a hamburger bun. So I'm working on the Crypto Hulk Challenge. I haven't weighed myself yet. I gotta, you got to give yourself a couple weeks for the body to adjust, and then pounds start dropping. But anyhow, <clears throat> Big Royce, oh, I got part of my medication that came in. I think it's called Samoralin, S-E-M-O-R-A-L-I-N-E, Samoralin. It's supposed to be like a, a peptide, like a protein peptide that's like human growth hormone, but doesn't give you the side effects. I haven't taken it yet. They didn't send me the shots, but um, that's supposed to help lower my cholesterol, do all kinds of wonderful shit, drop body fat. We'll, we'll see. Um, but I'll, I'll show you guys that later on another show. Once I have all my stuff, then I'm going to show you what I got and so forth. Okay. <clears throat> and I'll give you the name of the, the company I go to and stuff. All right. Big Royce gave 10 people. RK man, Braylon Jackson, have to kill me first. The Lazard man, Tyler Wilson, <clears throat> Uncle Pete, Donald Jalin, Arthur King, Rye Guy. I remember that name. Those people got memberships from Big Roy's. <clears throat> Galactic Federation of Hoddle. You're spot on, Hall. Congratulations for understanding. That's what I'm just trying to show you guys, simple stuff. XRP is about to inject Diana Ball. I wish that shit would happen, but we're probably going to have to wait. Research MK677 and BPC157 really helps my recovery. I'm looking into some of this stuff. Oh, CJC1295. That's kind of like Samoralin. <clears throat> I think, uh, but that one was only, that was tested on like pigs or something. And then Samoralin was tested on like AIDS patients or whatever. But anyhow, but that's another show. We can get into all that. They mix the two together. <clears throat> all right. We're out of that settlement agreement. Let me click out of that. There's the office okay next article where do we want to go next treasury note one kind of showed that one already let me get rid of that 18 united states code <clears throat> okay european union big news <clears throat> now we're going to leave america and go to europe where the communist stuff is in full force and don't worry, America, about six months, 
to a year from now, um, this shit will be here too. Here we go. Here's the title. The EU Digital Wallet Framework. See what I'm talking about? Framework. Digital Wallet Framework. We don't have that in America. I'm not going to give you another lecture, but it's like we don't have a crypto framework and we don't have a digital wallet framework. Therefore, the judges in America can't do shit, okay? <clears throat> now, if you want to be a little bitch company and accept the judge's decision, if you're a smart lawyer and the judge, like, what's her name, Folia, whatever the fucking name is, Coinbase needs to appeal to the higher level court of appeals and then put in, there's nothing in the United States code. I'm just curious, court of appeals, uh, what fucking code sections of the United States code is this based on? Your answer will be like, you're exactly right, case dismissed, okay? <clears throat> now, the EU digital wallet framework is finally adopted in Europe. That means the Europeans now have law regarding digital wallets, okay? This is massive. The European Council has formally adopted a new framework for a European digital identity wallet that will allow citizens to prove their identity and share electronic ID documents using their mobile phones. It um the Secretary of State calls this a milestone in our society's digital transformation. This is, in the words of Donald J. Trump, this is huge, okay? <clears throat> right there. Um, the framework is a milestone in our society's digital transformation. All I got to say is wow. Okay. <clears throat> Enabling citizens to have a unique and secure European digital wallet. We're going to have a United States digital wallet. Trust and believe. It's already here. While remaining in full control of their personal data. Oh, yeah, right. Um, a key step forward for the EU, which will set a global benchmark. Are you hearing that? It's come, we, it sets a global benchmark. We will copy Europe. That's why I'm showing you this. America, Mexico, wherever the fuck you're listening to me. <clears throat> the European Union will set a global benchmark. Do you hear me? Everywhere around the world, I got people listening to me. The EU will set a global benchmark. Everybody will copy them. I've now said this like four to five times. That's why I'm reading this article. Well, Crypto Hulk, I live in Scandinavia or I live in fucking Mog Mogadishu. I don't care where you live. The EU will set a global benchmark in crypto wallets. It's coming soon to a theater near you. Okay. <clears throat> um. Moreover, by putting citizens at the center, the European Digital Identity Regulation contributes to significantly improving <clears throat> and simplifying access to public service. Now, what they're going to do is all of your shit is going to be in a wallet. And I'm telling you what, if they don't like you, they can block your shit, they can make your account disappear oh i'm sorry sir we don't seem to have an account with your information in it oh <clears throat> oh yeah let's say um you're sick and you can't go to the atm machine <clears throat> it's which they won't well they still are going to have some for a while eventually they're going to phase out all this stuff but at least for now but it, it, your friend won't be able to use your pin code to get your money because they're going to have facial recognition, voice recognition, fingerprints. You're out of luck. And if your friend is on the shit list, oh, man, you definitely ain't getting nothing out of your account. <clears throat> now, this is going to be this wallet thing. You won't be able to rent a house if they don't like you. Oh, all this will have to get ran through the government. 
That's what they're doing. They're going to be able to track and control everybody. This is how it all starts. They're going to tell you, oh, yeah, it's all voluntary. You don't have to do any of this stuff. Yeah, you will. They're going to start off, oh, do you get welfare? Oh, you're going to have to have a digital wallet. Oh, you got disability payments from the government? You're going to have to get a wallet. You get it at the county level? Yo, you definitely get a wallet. That's how it will go. Oh, your tax return? Digital wallet. Then pretty soon, your employer is going to be like, we got to get digital wallets. Then all this shit, it, it, just, it starts off small, and then it spreads like a cancer. <clears throat> there is your um, European Union digital identity wallet. It's a form of ID. And that will be commonplace. It takes effect 20 days from today. So they're going to start working on it 20 days from today. There you have it, Europe. And the rest of the world, be careful. It's coming soon to wherever you're at. Let me click out of that article. <clears throat> That leads us to our next one in South Africa. South Africa, you got ATM machines with all kinds of biometrics. <clears throat> and the government will be able to track through your face, through your voice, everything. Let's look at this article real quick. Biometrics hold the key to more secure, oh, more secure and efficient ATMs in retail environments. So let's go look. <clears throat> Biometric enabled ATMs have a key role to play in promoting more secure retail environments. Oh God, these people are so fucking stupid. They're just gonna try to make a slave. Oh, it's secure. I'm like, wow, you think I'm that fucking stupid? Uh, but some people are going to believe this shit. Oh, I, I I want them to have my voice and fingerprint and facial recognition. And they can even get my butt pictures, too, while, while they're at it. That's okay with me. Um, the company's called Easy Pay Cash. One of the automated cash management is called Cash Connect. <clears throat> it's part of the Lasaka Technologies Incorporated. L-E-S-A-K-A. Lesaka Technologies, Inc. You might want to look that one up. <clears throat> there has been a shift to online shopping and digital payments among some consumers, but there are so many people who still prefer to use cash. It's essential to streamline and digitize the experience. Uh, for retailers in smalling, installing a smart retail ATM recycler built to SABS Category 4 standards, it's like putting the bank in their store. Retailers don't need to leave the premises to manually bank their cash to get value in their bank account. Retailers not only reduce the risk, but they can also earn a rebate <clears throat> uh, from each successful card hold, cardholder cash withdrawal. Talks about reducing ATM crime. ATM fraud, such as card swapping, skimming. Um, that part makes sense. If they don't have your picture, then you ain't getting the money, you know? Um, people, they can even have your PIN. They can have your card, your PIN, but if they don't got your fingerprint, your face, and your voice, they ain't getting your money. That part is going to really cut down on crime, I'll tell you. Biometrics, they're calling this. Voice, your voice, your iris, your fingertip, your fingertips. Then you got to have a pin, of course, and the card, all those things. Uh, they've been doing this since 2007. Easy Pay Everywhere ATMs pioneered the use of fingerprint biometrics for child grant payments and has deployed fingerprint stuff since 2007. Um, <clears throat> they focus on uh, disability people and elderly people. 
in Africa is where this company is. Um, the biometric functionality enables cashiers to cash and dash, allowing for a quick and seamless cash deposit. It also increases accountability among staff when making cash deposits. So let's say you go to the bank <clears throat> and you say you put 10000 in an envelope. Well, they got your picture. They got your voice and shit. So if there's only 9000 in the envelope, you got some explaining to do. And now they count the cash as you put it in. Once a retailer deposits cash into their cash vault or ATM recycler, <clears throat> Cash Connect guarantees the funds in the retailer's bank account on the same day or the next day with an immediate risk transfer to streamline daily cash handling. That's the end of that article. So that's what we can kind of expect in the future. Stuart Lavelle, 11 11. Thank you very much for the $11.11. 11. Okay. ID you with a colonoscopy. No. Surprise figures. So let me get out of that article. <clears throat> um, hold on a minute. <clears throat> India. This will be the last article. It's going to take me about five to ten minutes. I'm going to keep it short. <clears throat> okay. This one's a, it's a very important article. <clears throat> because it involves India and Ripple. And India is like three times the size of the United States. I've got to read this. This is a solid article right here. It's, it's not a fluff. It's not going to be exciting. But it's going to show you exactly where Ripple fits in. Okay, here we go. We got to do some work here a little bit. <clears throat> M, the letter NPCI. Nora Paul Charles Ida. Arm, NPCI. That's the India's payment system. <clears throat> it has banks and fintechs. They're in talk. Banks and the fintechs and fintechs in India are in talks because they're going to work together for the future of money. Okay? Let me scroll down through here. NPCI, banks and fintechs are in talks to implement, listen to this, banking interoperability. We, we all know what this, where this is going. Okay? And, uh, NBBI could start work on the pipelines to enable such transactions in April. You guys? It looks to me like India is starting to go XRP Ledger, XLM, and XDC in April. <clears throat> They're talking about the pipelines. I'm not saying the price. We're talking the pipelines right there. Currently, conversations are happening with large participants in the net banking. Now listen to this. The top banks like HDFC, that's a Ripple partner. SBI, that's a Ripple partner. ICICI, that's a Ripple partner. They are the largest players in this space, and they all want interoperability with all the banks in the country and the government. This is going to start in April. This is a big deal. They're starting to get close. The Reserve Bank of India is all up in this. Uh... The Reserve Bank of India had on March 4th approved implementing the, intra, the interoperable payment system. Oh, my God, are you hearing this? On March 4th of this month, India's Reserve Bank signed legislation, whatever they had to do, to start implementing interoperability in India. Everybody, XRP is getting laid out with the XLM and the XDC. That's what this is. I just named all these Ripple partners just now. HDFC Bank is the biggest bank in India. SBI, and then you got ICIC. They're all talk about interoperability. That ain't Ethereum, let me tell you that for certain. 
as part of its, oh, listen to this. Now, remember what I said. I kind of had a prediction. Spring 2025 is when something really massive should happen in the crypto space with XRP. Look here. As part of its 2025 vision, need I say more, okay? They start talking about immediate payment service. Are you hearing me? Real-time gross settlement. Immediate payment service. What do you think that is? Two to five second XRP. You guys, I really think it's spring of 2025 is when all this shit takes off, okay? <clears throat> it starts talking about internet banking. What crypto do we know that is all about interoperability, cross-border payments, banking? That's XRP, XLM, and XDC. That's what those are. And then they keep naming the Ripple partners right there. The Reserve Bank wants to ease net banking payments. India's bank wants to make it easier for fintech to come in and do what it's got to do. It says here they want the adoption rate to go up so volumes can be diversified across payment channels. They're trying. India is now trying to get this after all these years of India trying to supposedly to shut down crypto, now all of a sudden, India's trying to use it, okay, to get all the banks hooked up. Talks about interoperability again. <clears throat> okay, let's go to the next article that relates to this. Oh, wait till you see what I got for you. I'm going to show you something right here. Let me do a copy paste. Right there. If you click on that one, what do we see? <clears throat> oh man, Crypto Hulk. Google backed payment company Ripple is in talks with NPCI. Well, well, well. What what the fuck were we just reading about? Google-backed company Ripple. Wow, that's a connection, isn't it? They're in talks with India's at National Payments. The National Payments Corporation of India is in talks with Google-backed payment company Ripple. Damn, Crypto Hulk. You just fucking laid it out right there. Yep. The other article is talking about speeding this up, wasn't it? Interoperability pipeline, 2025 vision. They want this done in 2025. You guys, we're, we're at the tail end. That's for sure. They mentioned Axis Bank. <clears throat> That's a Ripple partner. They talk about Yes Bank. That's a Ripple partner. Do you see, like, what's going on? Well, I don't, I don't believe in ripple or crypto well then you're gonna be a fucking broke ass biatch next article right here this is a truth bomb so all the work is done that article all the hard the hard work and the heavy lifting is done now i'm just setting off a couple truth bombs for you see that crypto hulk was right hdfc bank joins ripple what is hdfc bank crypto hulk it's india's largest private bank ripple partner Holy shiznit. And they're involved in the uh, the NPCI. Next, the article talked about SBI. And I said, oh, there's a Ripple partner there. So let me show you this one, show you the proof that it's Ripple and it's not Ethereum and it's not Bitcoin. Here's the title of this. SBI Holdings to Launch XRP. And they're going to have a ledger. Oh, the Expo 2025. Well, damn, Crypto Hulk, why does 2025 keep coming up? Because I told you that's when it's going to happen. Next. Truth Bomb comes in. Hold on a minute. That one didn't quite go. Okay, let me do a copy. Wait till you see this one. 
And I'll get to uh, Stuart Lavelle. Good heavens. Hold on. <clears throat> this is your last truth bomb for the night. Look at this article right here. It's from the Business Insider website from India, an Indian website. Look what we got here. SBI, I just showed you that. HDFC, I just showed you that. IC, ICI, I didn't show you that one. And 12 other banks. By the way, these are all Ripple partners right here. <clears throat> and there's 12 other banks they're joining forces, everybody. This was three years ago. Oh, now I'm showing you the old article. Three years ago, I, I read you the article that India is just doing this right now. They're they're laying down all the pipeline. So they're saying it's probably already done. So it's, it's already done. They're telling us they're going to do it by 2025 and have it ready. I say spring. So get your moon boots ready. Um, but here, three years ago, these 12 banks are saying they're joining together to do something massive. Let's take a little look. Some of the biggest banks of India are joining hands to create a new company. These 12 banks are going to create a new company that will leverage the power of blockchain. Whoa. I'm going to, the system will be based on Infosys Finical Connect, a blockchain based that enables digitization and automation of trade related finance. That's XLM right there. <clears throat> if I were to look up Infosys and do some searches and shit, you're going to find Corda platform or something right there. That's the XDC crypto you need to get. XDC, trade finance. That's XDC. Hold on a minute. Yep, here we go. Fuck, I knew it. I'm going to show you proof right now. Copy. Watch this. XLM is a crypto you need to get. Watch this one right here. I'm going to show you. Look at that article. What does that article show you? Infosys and R3. Oh, shit, Crypto Hulk. You're right. <clears throat> when was this? Six years ago. They've been planning this shit for six fucking years. Infosys Finacle and R3 partner to bring blockchain solutions on Corda for banks. Oh, shit, Crypto Hulk. You were right. Yes, I was. I could read an article and find shit. You guys can't. All right. Now, R3 uses the crypto XDC. There's your evidence right there. What is this? Oh, wait a second. Here's the article right here. Copy and paste. That's the article right there. Now, when you click on that one, R3 Corda network set to go DeFi with XDC digital currency. Everybody, I just showed you how Google and Ripple are working with India's payment system. So now you need to go get XRP because that's just the facts right there. Next, I showed you Infosys, which is an Indian company, is working with R3. Then I showed you R3 Corda is using the crypto XDC. That's another one you need to buy. Got it? There you go. How you like me now? I love when the plan comes together. Stuart Lavelle gave 10 people memberships. God. 
Let's uh, go through it here. <clears throat> Dana Doherty, Resolution, Joe Johnson, Kingdom Vlogs, XRP Daddy, Sonny Struck, Sean Wright, Lex Vortex, JP Martin, Cody. All those people got memberships from Stuart Lavelle. Stuart, had, Stuart opened up the uh, employment office by himself this evening while I was doing the show. He has his own set of keys. Okay. Thank you for reading it for us. Bill Quackenbush. Bill, thanks for that donation to the channel. Totally appreciate it. MC Prosperity says, we have an awesome family here. We do. I try to kick people out that I don't like on purpose because I don't like dealing with dumb shit people. So if you're on this channel, I obviously like you. I, you wouldn't be here. So there you have it. My work is done. Hour and 15 minutes. Oh, shit. I got to pick somebody up from work. Okay. Got to be over there in about 10, 15 minutes. Okay. That'll be it. That's enough deep diving, man. I'm fucking tired of this shit. I need a break. And then uh, tonight, in about two hours from now, I'll try to find all my evidence. For I'll try to do a morning show tomorrow. I kind of am working on one right now. I got one article for tomorrow. I need to have like at least four if I'm going to do a show. And that's the show. So that'll be it. I got to get back to work and find interesting stuff. I need to show <clears throat> all the connections with like big connections. Like India using Ripple and India using XDC connections. That's the kind of shit that I mean. So you guys know when you go to buy a certain crypto, the country of India is actually working on getting all the banks and fintech together. They're using a company called Infosys, which is using Art Recorda. And Art Recorda is using the XDC crypto. I'm trying to show all these little tracks, the, the pathway, the pathway cryptos. My brain is done. And uh, I'm going to probably get some uh, alcohol in me in a couple hours from now. Once my work is done, drinky time. Well, not quite. Seven o'clock, eight, nine, like two more hours, and I'll just have a couple shots, and that'll be it. All right, I'll see you all in the next broadcast, hopefully tomorrow morning, 6.30 a.m.